So first let's learn about the hypoglossal nerve and I've just drawn a face here and one side is affected which means obviously that side is weak and the other side is not affected. Now hypoglossal nerve means we are talking about the tongue okay. So we need to know when the person sticks out their tongue will it go to the right or to the left that's what we need to know. So in this case in a lower motor neuron lesion when the patient sticks out the tongue because this side is strong so if this is the tongue this side is strong and this side is weak okay so what happens is these muscles they push push this tongue towards the affected side so it deviates towards the affected side in case of hypoglossal nerve so Basically, if this is the tongue, I just draw, let me just draw this line here. And this is the strong side, okay? This is the strong side and this is the, the other side is the weak side. So, what happens? In a normal tongue, let's just see, see what happens in a normal tongue. There's force from the left and the right. So, it's stable. The tongue is stable. It doesn't deviate to the left or the right. But here, since this part is strong, it pushes from here, but this side is weak. So, even if it push, that's not strong enough. So, the tongue deviates to the affected or the weak side. So, that's about the hypoglossal nerve. My geminal nerve, it's the fifth nerve. And it usually supplies, we know, mandibular nerve. Yes mandibular no now suppose there's an injury to the peripheral part of the mandibular nerve what can happen it causes paralysis to one side of the jaw okay one side and then we should know which side the jaw deviates so for the lateral pterygoid muscles the lateral pterygoid let's just draw the lateral pterygoid so th suppose this is the lateral pterygoid muscle it along with some um, muscles in the upper neck opens our jaw okay and how does it open it opens our jaw in a specific direction downward and opposing inward okay this is how it does so this is one side so let's say there's another lateral pterygoid on this side again downward with a downward and inward motion it opens the jaws let's just assume these are the jaws okay so what happens if one side's mandibular nerve has a peripheral uh, is affected peripherally then there's a paralysis of the jaw on one side now we need to know what happens will the jaw deviate towards a weak side that is the affected side when it opens or towards the opposite side well it deviates to the paralyzed side just like the previous one so let's say this side is weak so it pushes towards this side this one also tries to push but it's very less strength that's why i've drawn this small arrow this inward vector of the opposite pterygoid is unopposed that means it's trying to open the jaw but this inward motion, it opens the jaw downward and inward. That is a motion. But this inward, this part, they are not able to do it. So again, it deviates to the affected side. Next is the vagus or the 10th cranial nerve. Now we know that vagus supplies the uvula. Okay. And uvula, now we need to find out when it is injured, when this cranial nerve is injured, when 10th cranial nerve is in injured, where does the uvula deviate to? Away or towards? Okay. So normally, normal cases, palatal arches, what they do is they elevate and they constrict. So this is what happens in a normal case. So when it elevates and constricts, this makes the eula to stay in the middle, in the midline. Okay. But what if one side is affected like that is like that shown here? This side is affected. So what happens? This side is weak. So there is no constriction and no elevation. 
So, this case, the eula moves or deviates towards the strong side. That is this side. So, in eula's case or in vagus nerve, it deviates away from the away from the affected side. So, in the other two cases, it was towards the affected side because the other unaffected side was strong. But here, because the affected side is weak, the eula shifts to the strong side or deviates to the strong side. So, deviates away from the affected side. Next, we look at facial nerve, which is the seventh cranial nerve. We know that facial nerve is the reason we smile, right? So, what if one side is affected? We smile with our lips, right? So, we are looking at the lips here. So, one side of the face is affected. That is, this is the patient with a lower motor neuron type of seventh nerve palsy. Now, what happens? Will, where will the lips deviate? So, the facial nerve makes you smile. So, if the affected side doesn't work, when you smile, the lips will be pulled to the opposite side. So, the lips, let's color it red. Lips will be uh, deviating to the opposite side. So, it will come to this side because this side is weak. So, again, here, what, what do you see? Similar to Eula. What do you see? Yes, it is deviating away from the affected side. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment on what I should do next. Thank you.